everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I wanted to do a little tutorial for you today. These are uh, treat bags from Designs by Juju. I want to show you these. These are so cute. Y'all, they're fully lined. Look at this. There's the back. There's the front. And they have a full and complete lining. I'm going to show you a cool little trick so that you don't have to do any kind of hand sewing at all on these bags and they include what's called a casing and that's this is an extra piece of fabric right here there's one on the front and one on the back and a piece of ribbon goes through them and they cinch up and these are just the cutest little things could you see doing these for Halloween with little uh, you know goblins on them or little pumpkins or something or maybe you have a special kind of crazy and you would like to make these for an entire wedding party. But the little one is just perfect for a little gift card. I think they're just too, too cute. Made this one here. So they're just a lot of fun to put together. They're only two hoopings and they're really easy. So let's get started. For this bag, I'm going to be doing the size that fits in the 6 by 10 hoop and it gives you all of the fabric sizes right here that you need and right here for the casings where it says two pieces of fabric that are five and three quarters by one and a half I'll cut five and three quarters by three and cut it in half so uh, that just makes things a little bit easier but I wanted to show you guys that the way I like to make my casings is a little bit different than what they show in the instructions they want you to fold up half an inch on each end of the casing. I usually uh, make a mark then at the one inch point. So I use this wonderful, this is one of those Nancy Zeman things. Y'all, I have used this thing for years. I love it. You move the green part to where it needs to be at the one inch. And then I make a mark at the top of that with a friction pen to mark not where I'm going to fold it on, but where I'm going to fold it to. And I just, I just prefer that method. I find it to be more accurate. Then what I do is I take a little piece of steam -a seam and put it right underneath where I'm, my marked line is and I trim it. This is to give you a nice finished edge on your casings. And your casings are what you're going to feed a bodkin through or if you're a real uh, glutton for punishment you'll use a safety pin so then i just fold this up to the top of the seam the same press it in this is just easier than doing four ends you're only doing two ends i hope that makes sense because i'm going to cut this strip in half all right now we have nice finish ends i'm going to cut it in half to make this project you're going to need two pieces of lightweight tear away stabilizer. I didn't have any lightweight. I used medium weight and that's okay. It'll just be a little bit tougher to pull it away from the back but it'll work just fine. You need one piece of fabric for the back, one piece of fabric for the front bottom, one piece of fabric for the front top, two pieces of fabric for a casing or in the case the way I do it I use one piece, prepare it and then cut it in half for your casings. You need two pieces of fabric for the linings and you need a piece of ribbon. You need the instructions. You need a firm surface for when you pull the hoop out and need to trim away the edges of your casing. And not necessary, but very, very handy is a bodkin. And if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you get one. They just make your life so much easier when you're trying to pull the ribbon through the casings. I'll be stitching today on the Brother Luminaire. I am using Isocord thread for majority of the stitching, I will do the decorative stitching on the front using a black, but for the most of it, I will use this pink. And then I am using a pre-wound 90 weight bobbin. I will link to all of these products below. You're gonna need a pair of curved embroidery scissors. I always say in my videos, don't go cheap on these. These are gingers, they are worth every single penny. They have an incredibly sharp blade and they don't hurt your fingers. Also, I am using an Organ 7511 needle. When you make this project, you're going to stitch out the back of the bag first. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it from this side of the luminaire instead of the other one. Hopefully you can get a better view of what's going on. 
I am making the one for the 6x10 hoop. So the first thing it's going to do is stitch out the placement line for the back of the bag fabric. You want to place your fabric so that you can see about an equal amount on either side of the top and the bottom stitches and pull it over and then you want to flip it up and make sure you've got about an even amount on either side of the side to side stitches. Can you see that? So that looks good on this end and this looks good up here. It is time for the tack down stitch on the top and the bottom. Next, it's going to stitch out the placement lines for the casing. Okay, it's really important when you're placing the casing, can you see the edges of the line? I'm going to make a mark on these with a friction pen and hopefully you can see them. I'm going to make a mark on this one at least. The foot won't let me. It's right here, and right here, and right here. You do not want your casing to be any longer than the past these uh, ends of the stitch line, or you run the risk of stitching your casing ends into the seam allowance and closing them up, and that is not good. They need to be exact. If they are too long, you need to peel away the steam seam and fold it in a little bit more and then iron it back down. Now you want to remove your hoop and trim away the excess casing. Now it's going to do the satin stitch on the casing edges. to put the lining on and again this is really important that your fabric pieces are cut to size as required by the instructions you want to match up the top edges of the fabric and they need to come down should sit right on top of it just right and now it's going to tack down I know it's the same fabric but they are right sides together Okay, that's it for the first hooping. I'm going to take it out and you want to flip it up and make sure it looks good and we're going to remove it from the hoop now. And you want to tear it away from the stabilizer. If you have a, a stitch that is really strong up here at the top, that's okay. That is part of the thread from the placement line. So that's okay if you cut that around the very outside of the backing. It's kind of hard to see here because I made them the same fabric, but I hope that you can see where the seam line is. You want to press these straight, press them flat, and then what you want to do is fold it so that there's just a teeny tiny bit 
of the outside where the casing is showing up here at the top. And that way you can be sure that your lining will be tucked down inside. When you look at it from the front, you shouldn't see any edge or color from the lining. Here's a real good shot of it on this other bag. So you can tell that from the front, from the outside, you can't see the lining at all. Now that this is all done, put it aside and hoop your next piece of stabilizer. We're all ready to get started with the second hooping. This one is going to take nine minutes. The first one only took five. This is going to stitch out the placement line first for the bottom of the bag. You want to put your bottom fabric face up with even amounts on either side of the stitch line and push it right up to the edge of the top of the placement line up here. Now it's going to tack it down. And next it's going to make a placement line for the top part of the bag. If you did this right, you do not need to worry about the embroidery foot catching up underneath this edge because it is designed to stop right at the edge of the fabric. So now you need to put the top of the bag. If your fabric is directional, you're going to want to put it the way you think you want it to be. And then you're going to want to pull it down from the top and place it exactly even with the bottom of the bag top, this top edge up here. You want that even, not over, not shy, just even amounts on either side of the placement line and it will tack it down. Now it says to pull it taut and when it says that it means use a piece of tape. So go ahead and you don't want to stretch it but give it a nice firm smooth and use your finger nail and do a little crease right here. That'll work fine too and smooth it up taut and put a piece of tape and now it's going to create that tack down stitch. Now it's going to do the decorative stitching that goes right here across the, across the seam. Now it's going to do the placement lines for the casing. Again, I'm going to make myself a couple of little marks so I can show you. You do not want the edge of your casing to go past these marks or you run the risk of catching the edge of your casing in the side seam. Oh man! I barely made it on this one, but in this case, barely works. I should have known I have so much extra up here. Time for the satin stitch to cover the casing edges.
Okay, now you're going to put down the lining and you want to get it right up to the top edge of the fabric up here and you want it to be as straight along the edges as possible and it's going to do a tack down stitch. Okay, now really important. <laughs> Pull the lining up. Pull it all the way up. Give it a little finger crease along the seam and then you want to take the back. Let me get in here so you can see real good. You want to put the back face down so that the casings, they're facing one another, and you want to put the back up to the stitching line but not over it. If you go over it you will succeed in sewing your bag shut. So just push it up to it. If you're a quilter, it's like nesting a seam. You want your edges to be as even as possible on either side. I'm going to check my casings and make sure that they are even. Very good. That looks good. When you've got that, you want to pull your lining back down. If you forget this step, throw it away because you can't fix it. It says to hold it taut. You want to take a piece of tape and hold it down. And this will stitch the final stitch to sew it all together. Okay, it's all done. Oh, it looks like that little didn't trim right there. Okay. So we're going to take it out of the hoop and take it over to the cutting table and trim it up. You want to get off as much as the stabilizer as possible. Don't worry about getting it out of in that little decorative stitching. That's okay. So when I trim this up, I like to do it not from this side, but from this side. It seems to be a little bit clearer to me to be able to see where that stitching is. I do not cut this piece first. I like to trim the other three sides. This is where the opening is to turn. And so I'm going to trim the other three first with a quarter inch seam allowance. I trim this piece twice. So the first thing I do is I cut it at a half inch and then I take my scissors and I cut at a 45 degree angle to but not through those threads right there so that I make little tabs because you need that little extra bit to be able to um, close it up. So I'm going to take my rotary now and go up to that first cut and then I'm going to start at that one. Okay, so there's my little tab and now I'm going to cut 45 degree angles on the corners. I like to pull the farthest corners out first so I'm going to reach in and push with my thumb right there take my finger and push that out with my finger I'm going to do that with the other farthest corner as well put my thumb in there and the point and push it through with my finger and continue to do that and it just seems to make life a lot easier when you start with the farthest one back and work it out that final stitch is really strong, so don't worry about tearing out the stitches because you won't. So now the bag is inside out. So let's go to the ironing board. Any seamstress will tell you that the key to a professional looking job is your pressing. So just like how the lining was just a little bit inside the outside of the bag, we want to do the very same thing now with the other side of the bag, the back of the front of the bag. I'm going to press this so the lining is just inside. A sleeve board works really well, especially the child's one. Put it on there. Press your seams nice and flat. Turn the bag right side out. And what I want to do is I'm going to pull back the top tab and iron it. And flip it over and pull back the tab that is the back of the bag as much as I can and iron it. Take a piece of steam seam and put it in between the middle tabs for the lining. Put it down. And 
Now I want to trim those. So I put a piece of steam seam in between the two middle tabs and iron them together, fuse them together. And then you want to fold that inside and iron it. Fold that in, iron that flat, and then fold these tabs so that they are even with the side seam and you want them to be look like they got sewn together. Great. Now I'm going to take another piece of steam seam. A pair of tweezers come in very handy for this. I'm going to put this inside. And you want it right up to the edge but not over. You don't want your iron to get on it. Woo! Let that cool. It's completely closed inside the bag and it's permanently closed on the outside of the bag and you didn't have to hand stitch. So bodkins are the greatest thing ever if uh, if you don't have one you're going to want to get one. This is ingenious you guys. They've been around for centuries. <laughs> so all you need to do now with your bag is you're going to go in. You take the end that has the little slit. They make all different kinds of these things and you're going to slip it through the casing out the other end. Okay, so it's in the front half and then you're going to pull this and slip it in the casing on the back. It's kind of hard to do this. So it comes out the other end. If you don't have a bodkin, you can use a safety pin, but it's worth it. If you're going to make a bunch of these, it's worth it definitely to go to uh, get a bodkin. They make all different kinds. I've seen all different kinds, but this is the one I use the most. Now you take the end of your ribbon, slip it through the bodkin, pull a bit through, and then pull this end back through. All right, so now it's kind of like that. And then pull it through, now pull it through from this other side. And look at that. Ta-da! Look how cute that is! That is so neat! So now we have a fully lined bag and you know there's crabs in there and if you put your finger in you might get pinched <laughs> tell a grandchild that <laughs> how fun i do not recommend doing the initial uh, tie like on a shoelace they can be kind of difficult to get because of the way they're constructed you know when it's time to untie them just do the bow portion super cute look at how cute that is this is the largest size. This is how big you get. Yep, here's the smallest size right here. So these are great. They're great little gift bags, uh, treat bags, hold the beads from New Orleans bags, poker chip bags, candy bags. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like the content and you want to see more videos, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye. Don't pull it through. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Y'all, I have made all these bags. I've not done that one time. But now that I'm making a video, I did it. <laughs> oh, Murphy, showing up in my sewing room.